Hello. Our devotion for today is entitled, Bearing Our Sin. And it is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 1 through 12. The prophet writes, Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. As for his generation who considered, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death. Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. Why did Jesus go to Jerusalem? The disciples thought that he was going to come to terms with his opponents in one way or another, but they didn't know how it would happen. Today, there are many people who are just as perplexed about Jesus as the disciples were back then. That is because they didn't understand the grasp that evil has upon us. You see, evil isn't merely a mistake that can be corrected simply with a change of attitude. No, it's a part of our own nature what causes us to reject and defy God. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, it is written, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. If repentance meant, as many people believe, to just better yourself and conquer your own mistakes, then it would be a hopeless cause. The evil, which has no association with God and can never enter into his kingdom, would still be inside of us. 
our salvation cannot mean that God will simply turn a blind eye to what is evil. If he opened up heaven for us, as we are, then heaven would immediately become like the earth is today, a place where good and evil coexist. It would immediately become a place of conflict, suffering, pain, and tragedy. Bottom line, we cannot escape the consequences of evil. So what should God do? He doesn't want to lose his children, and he can't pretend that evil does not exist. Evil and the evil one are just as real as God. So God did something that Paul called the mystery of his will. And God allowed a glimpse of this mysterious will to be seen through the prophets. Isaiah showed it most clearly when he said in verse number 6 of chapter 53, And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. God took the unavoidable consequences of the fall upon himself in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He bore all of our infirmities. He was wounded for the sake of our transgressions. He was crushed for our sin. He became the offering. That's why Jesus went to Jerusalem. This is the mysterious will of God that we now enter as we follow him. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, we are guilty and ashamed. We would like so much to be your servant in everything. A servant that is pure of heart. A servant that is filled with unselfish desire and a servant that has enough love for everyone. But we know the truth. You did this. You allowed your beloved son to become the sacrifice for our sake. Even if no one else needed to be saved, you would still have died for our sake. We thank you, Lord, and pray that we will be able to do something now for your sake. Show us who we could serve and help as you have served us. Let us do it for your sake and to the glory of your name. Amen. God's blessings. I'll see you next time.